have returned. And I know that I have been gone a long time. Oh, I left at the beginning of December, December, January, February, March. <clears throat> now we're in April, so that's four months. That is a long, long time. And not only um, did I vanish off into the wilderness for four months, but I deleted my videos and I changed my channel name. Can you ever forgive me? But I do have coffee. Oh, mm -hmm. and look at it. it's blue and blue and blue. So we have this theme of blue and my roots and a little bit of red in there. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I'm in my office. And as you can see, my office is a different color. As a matter of fact, most of the rooms in the house are a different color, but we're going to do that another visit. This is my coming back. I promised you guys a, um, a life vlog. And honestly, I mean, I'm just going to talk from the heart. Honestly, actually I have Mama Mia going in the background. The kids are home. We're not going to do a tour or anything. The kids are home and they're enjoying themselves and watching Stranger Things. I love, oh my goodness, it's on Netflix. It's a series, Stranger Things. I love that series. It's, it's dark and it's scary, um, but it's a great series. And actually they have season five, which is supposed to come out pretty soon. They promised us 23. Then they said 2024, now it's 2025. It's like, but we're gonna hang in there. Anyway, I, in our next visit, I'm gonna give you a little house tour because I found some free paint on the street. Of course I did. And um, it was just a little can of like this really rich um, orange pumpkin. And then there was a tiny can of like, I don't know, like a clay, a rusty clay. And I painted one wall in my kitchen and then I painted the back splash or whatever. And I loved it so much. I couldn't wait to get up in the mornings and have my coffee, brew it and be in there. It just was so cozy. So it inspired this whole, I decided I was gonna paint all the rooms in my house a different color and um, I bought all this paint and when the new year rolled over I painted my office this color as you see and the living room's a totally different color the kitchen I finished painting the rest of the walls and um, and I painted one of the bedrooms and I'm, I've got espresso, I've got a big can of espresso and I'm gonna paint the hall and the pantry. But we've had some roof, the solar company had to replace part of our roof because they made a mistake and our roof was leaking. And anyway, that's the boring stuff. But I intended to come back with a life vlog. And then I just needed to unplug. That's all that happened. Nothing negative, nothing bad. I didn't trip out, nothing. I just thought I need to unplug, seriously unplug and focus on my family and my home and my writing because I hadn't written a book in a year and a half. And I'm someone, I mean, I cranked out like 34 books. This is including rewrites because there were a couple books I rewrote completely. I wrote 34 books in like six, seven years. And that's crazy. Um, but I never get burnout from writing. I never get burnout. But I did kind of just go through this thing where it's just I didn't write any, I didn't produce any books for a year and a half. So I hear Molly. I might have to let Molly in. That's the other thing. I needed to slim Molly down. I needed to start getting on track with my health. Oh, hold on. 
There's little Molly. There's Molly. Look at her. See, she's slimmed down a little bit. Oh, look at her. She's trying to find food. No, Molly. Come here. She has slimmed down a little bit. I think she's lost a couple pounds. Yes, she has. Anyway, I don't have a tripod. My tripod fell apart right as I was kind of deciding to unplug, and I took that as a sign. I know that's like a really small sign, but I took that as a sign. So I decided I'm going to unplug. I'm going to go in monk mode, go into the proverbial wilderness, and I did. And I, I was going to do it for a year. I was like, I'm going to give myself a year. Um, and I just wanted to be off the internet and everything and focus on my writing and my spiritual inner work and my health and my kids and my home. But you know me, I'm kind of like a whirling dervish. I'm a powerhouse. So I worked on my house for a couple months. I repainted the rooms. I'm still not done. I need to do, I need to repaint all the trim and the doors that's coming. And I cleaned out like every room I really purged and cleaned and organized and deck redecorated with what I had. Um, I did buy one new carpet, one new little airy rug. And, um, and I did get us some fitness. I already showed you, I, I had the elliptical. I'll show you the stuff that I bought. Bali has knee problems. And man, we went to town one day and walked to town and he was hobbling and I felt so bad for him. And I knew bikes, stationary bikes really help him. So for Christmas, I bought him a fairly inexpensive, but really good stationary bike. And he loves it and he works out on it all the time. And now his knee is doing great. He's doing great. But um, I... I just really cleaned and purged and organized and reset up my house from stem to stern and had time to do that and had time to really do some inner work, you know, because when you're doing the deep cleaning and the painting and the decorating and loving on your house and being quiet, that's when you do all your work, you know, that's when you do your best work. And I got really dialed in with like my fitness and I'm doing a lot of raw right now. As a matter of fact, I have a, a raw book coming. I don't know. Some of you may know Marcus and Cara. I've been really into the raw scene. I'm not doing it a hundred percent and I don't believe except unless a miracle happens. I don't believe that I would ever be a hundred percent raw. I really love to cook. I love to bake. I love my hot meals. I love my sandwiches, <laughs> um, but I am back to plant-based. That was another thing. I just had to kind of like really figure out what am I doing? Where am I going? You know, and I went back to plant-based. I'm not, I'm almost a hundred percent most of the time, but there are times when I make pizza and I use cheese. I would like, I got to find a really good vegan cheese. So if any of you know of a really good vegan cheese to use on pizza, tell me. So I use a regular cheese. But our house is now totally vegetarian. I don't buy meat. I don't cook meat. I don't prepare meat. Sometimes the dad buys lunch meat for the kids. I'm not thrilled about it, but they hate the vegan. I love the vegan lunch meat. I do. And I, but what they do love is Sam Turnbull is a vegan chef and she makes a vegan bologna and I make that and the kids love that. They actually love it and it's pretty healthy and cheap to make. So, but um, other than that, like I am not cooking or preparing meat. I just, there came a point where, you know, I felt like that. Um, I love Chef's Table France with Alan Passard and he is a, a three star, three Michelin star chef in France who was famous for his meat dishes. And then one day he just couldn't do it anymore. He said, it felt like I came to the end of the book and I read the last page and he didn't know what it was, if it was the blood or that it was once alive, but he just suddenly couldn't work with meat. And he had to step away from his restaurant for a year and figure out 
you know, who was he as a chef? Like, what was he going to do? But then he discovered fruits and vegetables and he fell in love with them. And he discovered I can, you know, flambe this and roast carrots and smoke turnips. And, you know, so he went back and switched all his dishes out to vegetarian. And, um, and he succeeded. He had a rough time and people criticized him and he lost patrons and or customers and they made fun of him in the newspapers and and they said you're gonna lose your stars and your restaurant and everything but he kept at it and he kept his stars and his restaurant became more famous than ever now he does serve some poultry and some seafood he you know he realized he was a little too hardcore so 15, you know, it's like 15 plus years later and he's kind of incorporated some stuff back in. But that's kind of how I felt. I just, you know, I've gone back and forth with plant-based for since I was like 17. And I just got to the point one day that I'm like, I don't want meat in my house. I don't want it. And the kids and, and the father, you know, they can go eat meat or when we go out to eat, they eat meat. And like I said, sometimes lunch meat makes it into the house. But other than that, we're vegetarian. And then I do mostly plant-based. But I'm not hardcore. I'm not going to be hardcore and crazy. Sometimes I have cheese. You know? I'm like, do I have an... I'm not... I don't have eggs. Eggs kind of gross me out. Anyway, but I'm loving it because I'm back to cooking my plant-based and veganizing all my traditional dishes and... I'm back to hand making my bread. I was using the bread maker all the time, but now I'm actually hand making my old honey butter loaves, vegan butter. See, and that's why I don't say I'm vegan because I do use honey sometimes. And um, so I'm having a great time, but I'm also really into this raw thing. And I do, what I'm starting to do is eat like tons of fruits and vegetables and salad all day. And then at night I have a big um, plant-based meal, like rice and beans, and I make Kiki's sauce, cheese sauce, ooh, yum, and um, potatoes. Anyway, so I took this time, and I didn't really know. I mean, I kind of thought it was going to take like a year. I thought it was going to take a year off. But honestly, I miss the community. I really did. I mean, it was hard. And I miss the community terribly. But I was doing so many positive things. You know, the focus was so on my kids. And they're thriving. And Sam's all caught up in school. And, um, and then I did so much focusing on my house and nesting and loving on it. And my house just looks beautiful and amazing right now. And I've been gardening, um, not a lot. My gardens are looking kind of crazy right now because we, it's wild. We are in Northern California, but we have had eternal winter, infinite forever winter over here. And I'm not going to complain because California is always crying about drought, but especially up here in the mountains, we have had just constant rain. And, and we had snow just, it's April, it's April, what, 6th today? I don't know. And we just had two days of snow. We woke up to a winter wonderland, white winter wonderland. It snowed all day and now it's all melted. Um, but I've been planting every month, winter greens, radishes, turnips, beets, not turnips, beets. So I've been planting like crazy, but my garden is looking a little wild and um, you know, just every month I plant whatever the calendar says to plant, but you know, they haven't had enough warmth and sun. They're just little sprouts, but we'll do that. We're going to do a garden tour. We're going to do a house tour. Not today, not this time. This time we're just saying, hello, I'm back. I am going to do a life vlog. And I am going to do things differently because I have changed, you know, I have been shifting and changing and, and, um, these four months, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, 
You know, it's like, well, a year you could see someone really changing. But I've been doing the spiritual work for so long that four months is like dog years. It's like, what, three and a half years? My little Molly. Speaking of dogs, both my dogs are gone. I had three dogs. I had two big dogs and then Molly. Um, Clyde passed, but he passed when I was still filming. Babu just totally declined, and then for a while he was doing okay, and then he just got really bad. So he is past two. So now I'm down to one little tiny dog. I'm not replacing the dogs. I love them very much. I gave them good lives. I cannot do big dogs anymore. I It has been so easy with Molly. Oh my goodness. I make her a little thing of homemade dog food, and it lasts forever. And I take her for long walks and I never stress out about other dogs because sometimes there's a dog loose or something and I just pick her up. I never trip about other dogs, but with my big dogs walking them used to always stress me out. And um, it's just easy. You know, I can throw her in the sink and wash her and trim her nails. And she's like having a little doggy doll, you know. Oh, camera turned itself on. Anyway, I'm also going to record when nobody's home. <laughs> it's just so much easier because then I can have my stream of consciousness and not be interrupted. And, and then I don't feel guilty. You know, like I'm taking time away from my family. So, um, yeah, so I was going to take a year, but four months felt like a year. It did, honestly, I got so much accomplished. I did so much inner work and outer work and work with the kids and work with the house. And I just got us up to like this top level. And there's been a large, you know, and the money was a little tight, but there was so much abundance, you know? I mean, I'll talk about that later also. But I just had to really have faith. Um, the Tibetan monks came to visit. They always, the Tibetan monks always come here and they stay at the Grange and they do group healings. And usually they do two or three group healings. This time they did like four. Or maybe they usually do two and this time they did three. I did, every, I showed up for every healing. They were all like an hour and a half long. They were all like chanting and visualizing and meditating and incense and oh my goodness. And I was exhausted after every single healing. And one of them, I can't remember what it was called, but it was all to remove your fears of like survival, poverty, consciousness, fears, so that you, they would be removed so that you would have faith in the universe and its ability to provide for you while you work on your dharma. And dharma in its simplest form is you working on your spiritual life. And the more we work on our inner spiritual life, the more we have to offer to our families and our communities and the more we have a light to shine out there. And I had to really look at my fears around not having enough money and my that I had a little poverty consciousness going on. But I'm telling you, that healing, ever since then, I haven't worried about a single thing. And we've had such a flow of abundance come in. It's just crazy. Um, so... I have a nice full pantry now. We had, there was this person on Craigslist who said his, he said in his post, he said, come raid my bunker. <laughs> and he said he was in recovery. He didn't get into detail. I went up there and it was a ton. It was the second time he was giving stuff away. He was cleaning out his pantry, his bunker, because he said he was moving. And the second time I, I responded to his ad and it filled up the back of our truck, the back and the inside, the back seat and the back of the truck, like filled it with stuff. 
and he wasn't moving. He said he just had a problem and he was in recovery. So I suspect he was a prepper and he was coming to terms with, you know, and his stuff was like expiring, but it was all canned stuff. It was all good. It was either in Mylar bags or canned or anyway, we brought it home and we kept the vegetarian stuff and I donated like almost a truckload of stuff to the food bank. And that was wonderful because his, all his stuff went to feed a community. And, and also it felt good to be able to go forage this and bring back all this food as a thank you. Cause we have been using the food pantry on and off for quite a few months. So that was wonderful. And it filled our pantry somewhat. I have a little pantry in my bedroom. I had some shelving. And so I filled it all up. And I've been working from it. I mean, I have beans and rice and enchilada sauce and tomato sauce. And I'll show you. I'll show you that too. Um, so that's been kind of fun to work with. And it is expired, but it's all good canned food. No dense, opened, compromised, nothing. And expired canned food, if it's in good condition, you can use it for years. So <clears throat> we've been, that helped tremendously. I mean, absolutely. So now we just spend a little money on produce every, you know, like 10 to 14 days, 10 days to two weeks. And then there were some piles of free stuff and clothes on the street. And I went through those and I found all these beautiful <clears throat> tops and a sweater and a dress and some clothes for the kids. So it's just been flowing in, flowing in, flowing in. And every month, it just gets easier, you know? The, even though we're on such a small income, the bills are paid quickly and easily. We're eating well, especially going plant-based. Since going vegetarian in the house and mostly plant-based, and I've been making everything from scratch, our food bill is tiny. And then we had this guy who, I mean, I have rice and beans and lentils and oats and quinoa to last me probably a year. And then I have all these sauces and everything. But between <clears throat> the plant-based and the cooking from scratch and then filling up my pantry with that guy's stuff, I spend, you know, I could probably keep it to a couple hundred bucks a month. And that's mostly produce. And then as the garden starts to really thrive and I'm going to be planting as soon as the snow and the rain stop, I'm going to be planting the garden like crazy because it's really rich. And we did a ton of work in the garden and I will show that too next time. So we're going to be growing all this food. And so we're doing really well. It's like, it's not costing, our mortgage is the biggest thing, but it's not costing that much to live. And then you just have to be careful with your solar and with, you know, we're still hooked up to pg &E, So we're just careful with everything and conservative, but we're living well and abundantly. And I really felt like ever since I had that healing, you know, with the Tibetan monks, I do feel like whenever I need something, it happens, it appears, it shows up. And, and I just don't worry about anything anymore. And I'm thriving and I am working on my Dharma. So anyway, I've got a lot of great books. I've been reading like crazy. I've been writing like crazy. I published two books, just so you know. I published a book called A Feast of Life. And I published in my first fiction in five years, um, Promise the Moon, and I will link both of those. And I am now working on my next fiction. I'm doing April NaNoWriMo. It's Camp NaNoWriMo. And let me turn this down. I'm starting to get distracted, so I'm probably going to wrap it up in a minute. Um... I'm doing my Camp NaNoWriMo, and I'm working on my second fictional book, 
and I'm super excited about it. Now, my first fictional book, uh, it was good. It, I'm going to say it was good, and it got a great review. I only got one review, but it got a great review. And my Feast of Life has gotten its selling, and it's been getting wonderful, beautiful reviews by some of you and some people I don't know. And it's different. It is about our home life, and it's about, um, you know, more a spiritual look at living humbly and simply. Instead of calling it frugal, because I'm kind of over that, I'm really over the frugal thing. It's more like, how can we live, you know, simply, sustainably, humbly, and have less wants and more experiences, less stuff, more experiences. And it's about plant-based because that has saved me a fortune and our health, all of us are thriving. Like we're not getting sick. We are looking better, feeling better. It's so good for us. Um, so it's, it's a lot, it's very different from the books I've produced in the past. And it's, like I said, people are enjoying it, which I'm really glad. Um, but those are the first two books I have produced in over a year and a half. So I am going to return and do a life vlog like I said I was going to do. It took me longer to come back and I apologize. But I had to, you know, I had to go off and figure things out. And I'm going to be forever working on myself and focusing on the family. I am going to return to that and I'll probably produce maybe a video a week, but no more than that. I'm not going to do like I did in the past where I get all crazy and I'm cranking them out because I'm really dialed in with the writing now. That's my new word for now, dialed in. Um, but I had to get back into that because I, I wasn't writing and I was could not get back to the fiction, but I am back in it. It's like I already put out a couple books. I got into my fiction. I'm doing great with it. I'm reading all these wonderful. I got this book, um, Save the Cat, writes a novel. Haven't started it at all, but it got rave reviews. But I have started, this woman has a channel. I started this, Shut Up and Write the Book by Jenna Morrissey. And she has a channel. I think she's very funny. I think she's very funny, to the point, blunt, sometimes vulgar. I love it. We aren't innocent. I'm not innocent. I try to pretend like I am, but I'm not. Anyway, I have been, I don't think you can see because the sun's shining now. Um, I have been highlighting this book like crazy. Uh, and I am a seasoned writer. I have been writing for years. I have published, like I said, 30, well now, I have written 37 books, 36 books, give or take. They're not all up there. I think I only have 30 books up on the shelf on my Amazon. But I love this book. I have been highlighting it, reading it, and it's really helping me get through this next book, which this next fictional book is going to be more a novel. The other one was like a novelette. It was quick. It was a quick little novelette. But it was my breakout novel, or whatever you call my return novel. And um, so it had to be kind of quick. And, and it's so funny. I, I wrote up this idea and this outline years ago. So I was really grateful to find it because it helped me like get back on the horse. This novel I'm writing now I'm very into. So it's going to be longer, bigger, more. Um, I'm more into it. Like, I'm really into the characters and everything. So I've been reading that, writing. I'm back on the horse. I'm back in the game. I don't want to lose that momentum. But I have missed this community something fierce. And I had to have a talk with my children. And my children agreed that it was fine with them as long as I record when they are gone. So when they're at school, I record. And I have to also make sure that I just don't get carried away because I don't want to be online that much. I'm actually really trying to turn away. I'm trying to see. Well, I can't get it now because I'm 
I don't have a tripod, so this camera is actually on a huge stack of books in a basket. But I'm really getting back into my reading. I've been reading like crazy, and um, I am doing more reading, writing, and not being online. And I cannot tell you the health benefits, the mental, emotional, spiritual health benefits of just not being online. And turning towards books, movies, music, music and literature, and espressos, and my writing. I mean, it's just transformed how I feel. So if you take anything away from this, I hope you take that. And I will talk about that more because it's very important. I feel like there's so many wonderful things about internet and YouTube. I mean, wonderful, wonderful channels, wonderful things. I'm going to share that. I've got some channels I absolutely love. I'm going to share those. I'm going to share books. I'm going to share my writing. I'm going to show you a tour of the house and the gardens. It is going to be like a life vlog. And I want it to be super positive, super inspiring. I want like after you get off my videos, you want to go read and write and garden and cook and eat fruits and vegetables. And um, and you're just going to be with me. And I'm, I'm on a lot of quests right now. I'm on a quest to really fully immerse myself in my fictional writing. I'm on a quest to get really fit. I've got this wonderful fitness routine. I found a free Marcy home gym that we set up in one of the bedrooms and I've been working out. I'm not really losing that much weight yet, but I am so much stronger and healthier. Um, we'll get into all that. But I just wanted to say I'm back. I don't know when I will post. I'll try to post once a week. I don't know when <clears throat> right now. Um, I haven't figured out a schedule. And I keep saying um, which means that I haven't got it figured out. <laughs> when I say um a lot, it means I haven't got it figured out. But there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to share. And I'm happy to, I will be happy to hear from all of you. And I'm happy to return. And I don't want to post all the time. I want to just post a little bit here and there and spread the love and spread a positive, happy, inspiring message and not have it be about subscribers or views or money. That is not important. We are doing fine. We have a small budget, but we're thriving. And it can be done. And I don't want to focus on that either. We're going to focus on other things, super positive things, not on that. Anyway, <clears throat> say hi to me in the comments. Tell me how you're doing. Share your positive stories, what you're doing with yourself with the new year. And I will see you in a week. And the next video, I will give you a tour of the house and the gardens, because by then it's going to be 70. By the end of this week, it's going to be in the 70s. Yay! So I'll show you all of that. And then we'll talk about all kinds of amazing things. Bye!